Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and you're with me Arun Sharma and in today's uh, session I'm talking about uh, an important part of uh, your, your corns prep strategy. Uh, this is session 4 of your corns prep strategy and uh, let me just uh, get my timer on. Uh, this is part of a 7 minute explainers for, uh, for CAT 22 prep strategy and, and today's session may, uh, as I had mentioned in the last class also I'm dealing with... Uh, what options do you have when you uh, are stuck inside a problem? Very often I've seen students uh, getting stuck inside questions and, and getting very frustrated about their cons, uh, learning experiences. And uh, I keep telling my students and I keep telling anybody who cares to listen to me that when you are stuck inside a question, it's not necessarily the end of the world. There are a few things that you can actually do to actually extricate yourself out of this question. And for the purpose of this video, what I've done is I've taken out uh, I, I was I was having this conversation with a student of mine at MindWorks and uh, I was asking this question ki, okay you you have a problem uh, you you are having problems identifying a solution to a question or you are getting stuck inside questions send me one particular question that you are getting stuck in and I'll show you how actually what, or what mistakes you're making in, in solving the question because ultimately aptitude questions are three or four steps long in quants and if you're not able to solve a question it basically means you're missing those at least one of one of one or more of those three or four steps and if somebody else can solve it and you can't it basically means that there's a particular turn in the question that you're missing so one of the things that i mean there's two two uh, starting options that that you should look at when you are not able to solve a question and the first of that is that you should learn to break down the question rather than uh, rather than picking up the question as as a whole what happens very often what i see uh, students doing is that they try to read the whole question at one go. The answer, if you're specifically if you're getting stuck inside a question, is that there's too much information coming into your mind at the same time. And obviously, if you can't use use information one bit at a time or one byte at a time, you will not be able to in, use five bytes of information together. So what you should do, the first step when you get stuck inside a question is start breaking down your reading, especially in word-based problems, uh, even in algebraic problems, etc. You will try to learn to break down your reading into, into smaller parts. Arithmetic based questions, word based questions, it's very easy to break down the reading. You just break it down uh, sentence wise or parts of sentence wise. And the other thing you do, rather than reading stories, uh, one of the mistakes I see a lot of people who are not good at maths doing is that they focus on too much on the story and, and stop reading variables. If you focus your, your reading, onto the reading of variables rather than the reading of the stories uh, your understanding of mathematics will generally improve and that's one of the key differences I have seen between students who are good at maths and students who are bad at maths the ability to identify variables and two kinds of variables the given variables as well as the hidden variables so in a, in a time speed distance question if I tell you uh, the speed of a car and the time the car traveled for a hidden variable or a derived variable which is coming out from that statement is the distance the car traveled which you should be able to take out and and people who are weak at maths are slightly weaker than others at identifying the hidden variables and also the given sometimes also the given variables so your first step towards uh, uh, towards uh, solving a question which you are stuck in you start, apart from breaking down the question into smaller parts, you start asking yourself, Kis mein variable kya diya hai? So just to illustrate this with that question, this is a very simple question, by the way. Not a very difficult question. <laughs> question so those of you who are <coughs> good at maths will, will not find this very, very challenging. But just wanted to show this to, in the context of that conversation I was having with my student. The question says, this is a past cat question by the way, Abdul goes to the market to buy bananas, if he can bargain, very very far, 90s, late 90s, ka, us time one minute per question hota tha solve karne ke liye. So don't jump out of his seat, see cat mein asam question aata hai. Abdul goes to the market to buy bananas, this is a neutral statement, there are no variables inside this, this is just a story. But the variables start in the next statement, if he can bargain and reduce the price per dozen by rupees 2, now you have to stop there. Aage padhoge to there's too much information coming in. Break the reading at this point because there's a variable that's being talked about and there are two instances of this variable being talked about. The price per dozen bargain and reduce the price per dozen by rupees 2. That means there's something is buying, he's buying bananas and 
in those bananas, he had an original price of P rupees per dozen and now he is able to bargain and bring down the price by P minus 2. Please remember price per dozen. So, so this is the variable being talked about and that is being brought down by rupees 2. So the, not only is there, there's a, there a variable there, the price per dozen, but there are two instances of that. Original price P and a new price P minus 2. So what happens then? You read further. He can buy three dozen bananas with the money he has instead of two dozen. So going back to our to understanding of the situation, that when the price reduces from P to P minus 2, he can buy three dozen bananas instead of two dozen bananas. Right, so, so one variable here is the price per dozen. The second variable is the quantity in terms of number of dozen. And the obvious relationship between price and quantity is price into quantity is the money you spent. Price into quantity is the money you spent. That's the obvious relationship between the two. And since the question says, with the money he has, you can buy three dozen instead of two dozen. It means that the money is equal in both the cases. So all you have to do is P into 2 is equal to 3 three times P minus 2. Equate the two because the money is equal. The money here and the money here is equal. So you can just equate the two. And when you do that, you will get 2P is equal to 3P minus 6. So P is equal to 6. So 6 rupees per dozen, the variable P was in rupees per dozen, price per dozen was rupees 6, 6 rupees per dozen and now P minus 2 will become 4 rupees per dozen and 2 dozen will give me 12 rupees as the total money, 4 rupees per dozen at 3 dozen will give me 12 rupees as the total money and the question being asked is how much money does he have, the answer is 12. So. <coughs> Apart from the, these two skills, picking the way, uh, breaking the question down into subparts, reading only bite-sized information, reacting to, to, to the reactable point inside the question and focusing on the given and the hidden variables. Apart from these two things, and every question that, that is tough in maths, us mein kahi na kahi variables ka hi play hoga. So if you can identify the variables and how they connect to each other, that connection comes as the third skill which is the ability to write equations. So if your equation writing skills are not so good, you can go back to school and, and do a little bit of work on your equation writing skills and come back to your CAT syllabus and uh, I think you'll be better at solving questions. So do these three things. There's one more very important way in which you can think or, 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 think or you can try to extricate yourself out, out of trouble in, in questions you are stuck in. That's reverse flow charting. I'll talk about that in my next lesson. Abhi ke liye, I'm taking leave. Bye for now. But before that, uh, one small this thing, uh, Darun Sharma Academy app. You can download it from the App Store, or the Play Store. App Store pe download karna hai, you'll have to use the My Institute app and uh, use the organizational code DGTCB. That is the org, org code you can use to do, do that. And uh, at MindWorks, we're also starting a, a placement uh, training program and you can get placed in your dream company. Uh, uh, through through our uh, training program where we train you for aptitude as well as interviews etc. Do inquire about this if you're looking for a high quality placement training course. Thank you so much. Abhi I'm taking leave. Bye bye.